what you probably don't know about medieval fighting and weaponry. Before the arrival of guns and cannons, wars and fighting in medieval times was a slow and laborious affair. What you see depicted in pictures isn't really that accurate. While many of you may know about longbows, their use wasn't particularly effective as a means of killing the enemy. They were, however, extremely efficient at disarming and disrupting an enemy. Longbow arrows seldom manage to penetrate any armour, but think on this. A longbow arrow weighs roughly 1500 grains. Yes, they weighed and still weigh arrows based on the weight of a single grain of barley. This means a longbow arrow can weigh twice as much as a golf ball, is nearly the weight of a cricket ball and can travel at a speed of roughly 150 feet per second. Whether or not you're wearing armour, getting hit multiple times by those arrows is still going to hurt. You see, the idea behind much of the fighting was to injure and disable the enemy and not to kill them. This was because in those days, you could sell captured soldiers back to the enemy. Fighting could be a highly profitable business and not just in terms of plunder. Then we have the forerunner to the anti-personnel mine, the Caltrop. This was a nasty piece of kit comprising a four spiked steel ground weapon, not dissimilar to a grappling hook, roughly four inches in diameter. No matter how they fall on the ground, there will always be one spike pointing vertically upwards, even if kicked over. Scattered in large numbers, they would play havoc with foot soldiers and horsemen alike. Caltrops were so important that Philip the Good of Burgundy even included them in his niece's dowry. Another popular misconception was that swords and broadswords were killing weapons. Yes, they inflicted injuries, enabling more soldiers to be captured and sold, but they were useless for killing. However, if you wanted to use a killing weapon in battle, you used a dagger, purely and simply because in close combat, a dagger was easier to handle and guide between the metal and leather plates in body armor. Thinking back to Roman times, we probably have a vague memory of boiling oil being poured on foot soldiers who were trying to storm forts. This became less effective as armor improved, and so it was replaced by quicklime. We've all seen a film where a body has been buried and covered in quicklime as that immediately starts to break down flesh and bone. In its fine powder form, quicklime could easily work its way under armor and clothing, causing immediate and very painful burning of the skin. Just imagine the paradox. You keep your armor on and burn, or take your armor off to get rid of the quicklime and get shot with an arrow instead. 